There's a legend, or maybe it's an old wives' tale in Judaism, and it goes like this. If an unmarried girl or woman holds the Havdalah candle at the conclusion of the Sabbath, her future husband will be as tall as the height at which she held the candle. In my house, our oldest daughter has been holding the Havdalah candle for many years. Ever since she was a little girl, she would stand on her tiptoes and hold it as high as she could possibly reach. And every year she'd get a little taller and hold it a little higher. And I would say to her, Tamar, what are you doing? You know that just about every Jewish guy is five foot nine. Where are you going to find a guy that tall to marry? And she would laugh and hold it just as high the next Saturday night. Well, fast forward the clock. Now she's all grown up. And a couple weeks ago, my wife and I walked her down the aisle to get married. What an incredible experience. And I got to dance with her at the wedding, which for me was a lifetime highlight. And would you believe, as Maxwell Smart would have said, her husband, my wonderful new son-in-law, is very tall. Here's a picture of me standing next to him. I'm the little guy on the right. I had a lot of time to think about this story over the course of the last few months, and I realized that my daughter's implied prayer of holding the Havdalah candle very high wasn't just a plea to God that she be able to meet and marry someone who's very tall. Rather, it was a request that she get to meet and marry someone who, like her, is fully committed to constant growth, to becoming the best Jew possible. And what a great message that is for the month that we've begun now, the month of Elul, the month that leads into Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the high holidays. A month when God, so to speak, is up in heaven, holding a hand to his divine ear saying, pray, I'm here, I'm listening, come back to me. He's like a third base coach waving us to come home to him. Many years ago, the famous quarterback and ladies man Joe Namath wrote an autobiography, and he playfully and boastfully entitled it, I can't wait until tomorrow, because I get better looking every day. Now, if you think about it, you take one word out of that title, and that could be the mantra for the Jewish people. I can't wait until tomorrow, because I get better every day. Isn't that all that God really asks of us? To be a little bit better tomorrow than you are today, and to be a little bit better today than you were yesterday. Don't think of the yoke of the commandments as a foot on your neck over a lifetime. Just think about the test that you have today, right now. That's why God says we have to observe the commandments that he's commanding us today, because it's like he's recommanding us each day. Just worry about today's test, this minute's test. You can pass it. God gave you the ability. And if you want proof as to just how much you can accomplish in a really short amount of time, consider this. On the eve of Rosh Hashanah, we pray the Mincha service, the afternoon prayer. And in that prayer, we say the Amida, the Shemona Esrei, that we say three times a day. And in that prayer, we ask God to bless this year. One second. This year? On the eve of Rosh Hashanah and Mincha, how much is left of this year? A matter of minutes? And yet we're still asking God to bless this year instead of the coming year? Yes. Because even in those remaining few minutes, if you reorient yourself, recalibrate, rededicate yourself towards serving him, you can change on the spot who you are and change this year. Think about that over the course of this month as you prepare for the big days that are coming. Mm -hmm.